much of a writing. All right. All right, all right, all right. You know, why we got to see all your chest? What about the glasses? I need the glasses. Here's the glasses. Can you see? I probably could. You, know, you need, probably need to go get your glasses. You got all my purple ones. Well, that's fine, but you still need your glasses. I don't know. We got to look at your chest? <laughs> Hey everybody, well, I ain't been you're not lifting. trying to look at your chest. I haven't been lifting in a while. I did well, my push-ups today. Did but you do push-ups today? Yeah, I did my push-ups today. But I'm, I'm really... leaning over him because he's got his charger and the dog on the wall. Yeah, hold so... this. I'm going to take it out. No, Cause... is it going to die? No, should And if it does, you know, we'll lean forward. Okay, uh, there we go. All right. Still seeing so, too much of blessed chest. Anyway, you know, because I'm not into him showing off all that chest to everybody. It's a love of chest. It's yeah. mine. <laughs> it's not for everybody to see it. Anyway, what, yeah. did we, what was I think? Oh, is this post about you? Oh, so what did we just say? Yeah, is this post about you? So you got to so set it up. Today, you got to set it up. Today, um, you know, I was thinking about something. Uh, you know, while I was driving, I was in the car, and I was, like, thinking about something real deep that I went through in my past. My glasses are crooked. I can't figure and out. And I went through within my past in the dating game. And, um, you know. Okay, tell me why this. Well, okay. So, in the dating. Do you need me to hold the phones while you're No, in, the, in okay. the dating game. I went through a lot, lot of stuff, and um, I was just thinking about how so many people are being played in, you know, in relationships, mm -hmm. and they introduce themselves as friends, you know, and I was thinking about me and you when we were dating, and how I would, you know, um, how I would introduce you to certain people, even though I never introduced you as a girlfriend, I never introduced you as as that as a friend or anything. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was just thinking out loud about it, and I was like, you know, most people, what message could I deliver that you know a lot of people. You know, when they introduce people, uh, you know, they carry themselves, they carry themselves as friends, mm -hmm. you know, because back when I was dating, I used to get offended when females would call me a friend and I'm sleeping with them and I'm spending all of this time with them, you know. Right. And so I was like, if you're date, if you're sleeping with them, you're no longer friends, you become an item, so marry them. So, of course, Brian Yetta said something about the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I say marry him or kick rocks, and then Brian Yetta says something. And then Darlene puts her two cents in and says something, like always, something that she feels is negative. She always has to respond to something she don't ever agree with anything I say her and somebody else from the beginning's community church but anyway she she was we was going back and forth and talking about it um so and then she read the post and you read real deep into it about judging you know she said that I was judging people yeah your words were judging your words yeah. were judging yeah and I'm like in a general post, I'm just saying a general post to general people. I have 2,000 friends, right? 2,000 plus friends. And I'm just posting, just venting. If you're dating someone or sleeping with someone, you're an item. So either get married or kick rocks. Who am I judging? I don't. It's just like if me and you were talking, right? Mm -hmm. That's just like if five people were in this room right now and I said, you know, um, you need to brush your teeth, but all five of you brush the damn teeth. 
Well, five of you brushed your teeth. Then, who am I judging? Well, you know, you hit a nerve. You hit a nerve because in both of their cases, from what I read, they lived with and slept with the person who eventually became their husband. But they're married now. But they're married now. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, you know, especially if it was a long period of time, which it seemed like it was, nine to ten years, um, that was a long time. And so, they're in a position to say, hey, I went a long time sleeping with somebody and didn't, and now I have this wonderful marriage and I think it's great. The the problem is, is that nobody said you didn't have a wonderful marriage. Nobody even said that you should be miserable. Nobody said that you were unsuccessful. Um, what his post points to is if you are sleeping and shacking with someone, that you're not just friends. And that's what I didn't understand. I didn't understand how we went all the way over to you know, you're judging people. If you're sleeping with someone, you're not just friends. It is fornication. Now, if you want to say, well, you know what? Great. I was in fornication with this guy for 10 years and now we got married and we're doing wonderful. Uh, okay. You're married. But that doesn't change that you were in fornication for 10 years or nine years or whatever it is. And, you know, um, what's the first lady's name? Vanilla, she said, you know, you can't rush into marriage. And and we never advocate really rushing into marriage, but we do advocate that if you're sleeping all over the place, you need to make a decision on what you're doing. If you're trying to do things according to, to God. God's will. And, you know, we don't control people, you know. And I think what, and the thing I want to get on this is about this whole judging thing. It bothers me. If someone is walking across the street and I say, you're walking across the street, I didn't judge them. I just observed that they were walking across the street. If I tell somebody that, then they tell me, well, the guy moved in and we're sleeping in the same bed and and you, so you're shacking and, and, you know, most adults over the age of 18, you're, you're having sexual intercourse with a person. And I say, well, you know that you're fornicating. That's not judging the person. That's judging an action. I have neither a heaven or hell to put anybody in. And I sure can't condemn a person. And I sure don't know what that person is going to do later on in their life. But I can tell somebody if they're committing a sin. And you, you did a very important thing. You said, look, if you see me committing a sin... You have every right, and you better say something to me. Don't just let me go, well, you know, that's between he and God, and I'm just going to keep my hands off of that, and I ain't going to touch it. And I... That is not anywhere in the Bible do you have this thing about oh, well, that we should just let yeah, folks mind go our business, yeah. and mind our business. Yeah. And that, that we don't... Is that in the Bible? It's not in there. It's not in the Bible that it's we should just mind our business? It's not in there to mind your business. What it is in there is not to gossip, okay? But it is never in there for you to just never worry about me and my husband. A word, you know, never to never address a brother or sister who you may see committing Going a sin. On. I would hope that if I'm out here lying, that my friends would say, "Hold up, Judy, hold up, you, you're lying through your teeth. Oh, you're judging me? No, you're not. You're telling me that I'm lying." And if I am, I either have to have a, make a choice on whether I'm going to stop lying or I'm going to continue lying. Now, we don't have any control over what choice you make. Absolutely not. But yeah, I sure can tell you, you're lying. I sure can tell you, you're stealing. You know, I can tell you that. Now, will I know everything about what you do? Do I know that you steal all day long or you lie all day long or whatever? I have absolutely no control over that. But when but you're around you, me, thank you. When we're and around was, each other, thank you. And if I if I what kind of person would I be? What, what kind of friends do I have that would just continue to let me go on? Now, this is the thing. If I was the person's friend, 
and they began to shack with someone and we had this conversation. Probably won't bring it up for nine years. I probably won't because first of all, I think you know better than I do. And especially if I brought it up the first year, you know. And then my prayer becomes is that please God help these people come out of, you know, this sin. Help these people come out of this sin. So my thing is this hands-off approach that I shouldn't say anything. I should just mind my business and whatever they do between them and God is them and God. I, I'm just going to say it. Thank you that you're not my friend. Because if you see me in something, you see a brother or sister taken in sin, you are not just supposed to mind your doggone business and walk off and leave them alone. You are not supposed to do it. Now, if you have the conversation and they persist in their sin, then you can maybe stand off a little and pray and be there as a spiritual, you know, lamppost. I always say, because sometimes we just need to be in the scene so that they will see that light. But as far as just taking my hands off, oh, well, I can't do anything, can't say anything. The devil is a liar. Yes, you can say something. And, and I, you know, when I have friends who are doing something wrong, they know, and there's a sin situation, they after a while know we ain't discussing this with Judy because we know exactly where she stands. She's not going to change her mind. But they also know I'm praying for them. They also know that I have them in my heart and my mind that they couldn't come out of this sin. Now, the other thing I wanted to address was Mr. Tim Pry talking about, well, you sin too. When are we going to get to the point that we focus on grace? Mm. We started sinning since the Garden of Eden. We couldn't get that straight. Mm. So it is not a question of who doesn't sin. It says all have sinned. What? Sinned and fallen short. All, all, all. Please mm. get that in your head. All. So there isn't a question about who did. We all did fall it. short through the glory of all, God. Uh, all short, fall short of the glory of, of God. the glory of God. Okay, all of us. So it isn't a question of, well, you sin too. Um, last thing I remember, all of us are down here, and Jesus had to go to cross to the cross for all of us. There was nobody sitting there like, well, you know, that's just for you that he died. He didn't have to die for me. All of us need this grace. But the point that you were trying to make is, are you receiving of it? When you think you've done nothing wrong, there's no grace. You don't need grace if you've never sinned. You, need, you don't need grace if you're not gonna acknowledge a sin. So the thing of it is, is that when I acknowledge my sin, whether it be a pride, anger, you know, arrogance, arrogance, unforgiveness. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me. Arrogance. My go ahead. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Whatever it is, when I acknowledge that, I allow God to what apply grace, and that's what I focus on. I don't focus on, and if we have to go there, I don't focus on that this person is a homosexual, this person is a lesbian. Oh my goodness, that's an abomination. So is your dog on stubbornness. Okay? The Bible says stubbornness is as witchcraft. So there you are. Are you going to focus on which particular sin you have decided that not to commit today? Or are you going to focus on the grace? that the Bible says is greater than the sin. Where sin does abound, grace even more abounds. So this is where, hey, Desira, this is where we have to stop playing these little mind games and these little word games and all these other little games. Quit judging people. Just stop it. Just stop it. I'm not judging the person, I'm judging the behavior. And I would hope you would take that much to judge mine. But what I would also hope is you would not just sit there and end at the judgment, that you would also talk about the grace that flows the from mercy. the gift that Jesus gave. Okay? It's not just eternal life and eternity. He's giving you the ability to overcome sin here in your mortal body. Okay? Read your New Testament. He's given us the ability to overcome sin. 
Now, these ladies are now happily married, both of them. And I'm thankful that you are. Thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But and I'm not trying to go back 9, 15 years and say, you were sinning back then, you were sinning back then. But the point of the matter is, as well, if I knew you back then, I would say, you know, God isn't pleased. God isn't pleased. And I pray that you two will come together. You know, I even acknowledge for some people, rushing into marriage is not a thing for them. I don't believe in rushing into marriage at all. But I will say this. If it took you nine, ten years, you didn't have to sleep with him for nine, ten years. You didn't have to shack with him for nine, ten years to know. The weather that does what I just said in my earlier life. You didn't have life. to do it. And, you and didn't have to wait. The thing of it is, is well, if, what, however if long, living... if they wanted to wait nine, ten years, they didn't have to do it shacking and fornicating. They didn't yeah, have to do exactly. it. Exactly. That they chose to do it is your choice. You see, the other is, God of also understand free will in the world. God gives you free will. And thank God he doesn't go striking folk down the minute we make a bad turn, a bad thought, or, or a sinful decision. Um, but that doesn't decision. mean, that, that, doesn't doesn't mean, mean that he's pleased, though, doesn't mean that with he's your pleased. free will. Okay, he doesn't, you know, just because you walk around and you're not destroyed does not mean that we should continue to tempt the Lord our God with behavior that we know is, is not his will. Because he's not a forceful God. Okay, it's not his will. And so that's where, you know, if it took you nine, ten years for whatever reason, I'm happy that you are now married. I'm happy that not only are you now married, but you continue to, to be happy in that marriage. Because we know a lot of people who they were nine, ten years together, and the minute they got married, it didn't Divorced. seem to work. Yeah, it seemed to fall apart. So I'm grateful especially for what's her name she's 22 years now so they were together for nine and now together for 14 and they're happy and so i'm very happy for you but that doesn't take away the will of god mm -hmm. and because it worked for you it doesn't take away the will of god you know that's like the thief saying, man, no, I've never been caught. It might have worked for you, but it didn't work for God at I that didn't time. get caught. I've been able to steal half my life and never got caught. Does that really, you know, make his life like it justifies what he did? Now, we have the example of two thieves that were on either side of him on the cross. And one was like, look, I've been a thief my whole life. I'm paying the debt for what I'm, I finally got caught up with me. But can you receive me? And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I can receive you. So in the end, God is, is interested in what? Repentance. Not that you've never sinned in your whole entire life, which is impossible, mind you. But he is interested in repentance. And he took a thief who had been stealing his whole life and had finally caught up with him and said, you know what? Because of your decision... Right now, you're going to be in paradise with me. The other thief is like, shoot, you know, well, we're getting what we deserve, and I couldn't give a darn. Jesus didn't have anything to say for him. Only thing that awaited him was what? A judgment, a true judgment and condemnation. The first thief was like, hey, look, we're getting what we deserve. This man didn't do a blessed thing. Can you please remember me? Can you please Think about me, even though I haven't lived this life the way I should have. Can you please? And Jesus says, I got you. So this is the mindset. My mindset is not to walk around with some, you know, pointer stick like laser light and go like, you sin, you sin, you sin. As they say, when you point one finger, you got about three fingers pointing back at yourself. The point is to bring us to a a level of repentance, a level of saying, you know what, Lord, yeah, I did that for nine, ten years and got away with it. You didn't judge me. You didn't call me home. But you know what? That isn't something that I want to give to other people to say, since I got away with it, you go ahead and try that too. Mm -hmm. that and that's exactly what it sounds like in that post when people read that what you said they feel that they can get away with hey, it. Hey, I did it for if nine, ten years. And look at my marriage. It's 
And so you as a Christian, and I'm not talking about Vanyata. I'm not even talking about Tim. I'm talking to you because you're supposed to be a Christian and up there trying to go against me with the whole with the whole set of the message that I was trying to deliver okay. to people who are not of God or to people who ain't even thinking about God. Turn this one this way. There you go. Two people who ain't even thinking about God. And it's two of y'all that always do the stupidest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Oh, no, because I get tired of it. I, I know, but you know, they're, they're coming from this mindset that I don't want to, I don't want to seen as a person who's holier than thou, especially, and somebody did mention having skeletons in their closet. Yes, she did. But my point is... This and is, so the thing of it is, is that, you know, knowing that they have skeletons, they're feeling like, oh, the last thing I can do is tell somebody anything. Because if you open my closet door, you know, whole bones are going to just fall out. But that's part of your testimony. That's part of the redemptive force of, of grace. Is to be able to say, you know what? I did this. And even though it worked out good, this wasn't God's will. He showed grace and mercy to me, but it wasn't God's will. It's okay to say that. It's okay to say that. You're not judging anybody when you share your own testimony. You're not judging a soul. I said, you know what? Just because God's grace and mercy was extended to me, I still have to tell you what God's will is. I still have to tell you what he asks of us. That's, that's what's so important. You know, I guess in order to hide our own past, we now don't want to talk to anybody about what they're doing. Yeah, but we all know that's not Christianity. That has nothing to do with God. When you have to hide yourself or hide skeletons on who you are, then you're looking at God like he doesn't even exist. Because you're looking at God like he can't protect you. He's not protecting you from anything. You don't know why that person is in your life or why That's God put that person you. in your life for you to share in order to heal that person from what they're going through or what they might go through before they even go through it. You might give them a heads up before they even see what the enemy has in store for them, what the enemy is doing trying to set up within their lives and they're already protected by your testimony. But you got so many skeletons in your closet that you don't want to reveal them. Well, evidently they still hunting you or something going on is still with you. Because you know, if it was your a, past, thank it was you. your If past. it was your past and you have been redeemed, oh my goodness, the story of your redemption is so important. It's so important because there are going to be people assigned to you that need to hear your story of redemption. They don't need for you to say, well, you know what? I, since I got skeletons. I, I can't judge nobody. I can't. Let me just not even, unless they bring it up and unless it becomes a topic of conversation. How could it not become a topic of conversation when you know these people or maybe you don't know these people? Now, I don't go around talking to strangers saying, you know, are you shacking? Are you... I don't do that. But when I have friends that go through situations. And family. And family, yes. By nature of our relationship with each other, I say something. Judy, I don't know if I want to hear that right now. I got you. But you know I'm always here. You know how I stand. You know what I believe in. And I have been through a friend who was into somebody and you know, it was just a flow. And, and I was like, what? This isn't Judy one day, one day, go ahead one day. And it went on for six years. At the end of five, I was like, you know what? I'm not, even gonna, be quiet. I'm not even gonna be quiet anymore. I started, God, I started praying. I was like, God, this, this thing, cause I'm being quiet and maybe I'm being too quiet. And right at the end of that fifth year, that thing came tumbling down like a house of cards. Okay. And basically, because I had stood there 
I had held up a standard, but I had stood there as a friend. We're still friends to this day. I didn't judge her as to throw her away. You judged her as a love. But, thank you. You're and not judging people to throw them away. Who ever said that's part of Christianity? Okay, who? Jesus said, you know what? When they caught the woman in sin and they came to stone her, and he first had to convict them of some stuff like, hmm, any of you without sin, you can you can throw the first one. And they all had to leave because they all had to remember, oh, yeah, I did that. And I went to the temple and, and, and mm, I had to give that offering. And, that, you know, they all dropped their stones and left, right? And then he looks at her and she sa and says, where are your accusers? And she says, I have none. But we always like to leave out what he told her. Do you know what he told her? Um, Go and you. sin no more. Ha! Huh. Seems like he judged a sin. Seems like he knew that she was in sin. But it wasn't to throw her away. It was to give her life. So if you're judging people to condemn them to death, you're doing wrong. But if you're judging a behavior to call that person into life, then you're being like your model, Jesus Christ, because that's exactly what he did. He told her to go and sin no more. So obviously he was addressing what? A sin. Not every sin she's ever done, so now she's never sinless again. But the one that they brought her for, he said, don't, don't do that. No more. But he didn't kill her. Okay, so this is what I don't understand. Are we reading our word? Are we understanding the mind of God, the, the mind of Christ? Are we understanding our role here for our brothers and sisters and for those who are without? Are we understanding anything here? Or are we just walking around as long as I got mine? You get yours, I got mine. What kind of Christianity is that? Well, maybe she ain't a Christian no more. Well, you know, I ain't seen her, you know, when he did. The, the, the woman yeah. says that God is in the midst of everything she has going on. They're blessed oh, and highly favored. Yeah, people can say and, that and all they I, want. I know they can. I'm just saying. What That's the easy says. to say. I'm blessed and how you doing, Shirley? Ah, oh, man, I'm blessed and highly favored. Well, where's the favor? Oh, I got a car, I got a Benz, I got a, I got the, the three-story house, I got a ten-story house, you know. <laughs> ten-story house. But miserable is all well, all I'm, You know, what I'm trying to say is, if she is, I pray she is. I pray no harm on anybody. I'll be very honest with you. But I do pray repentance. I do oh, pray no. redemption. I do pray maturity in God. I do pray that. And I still do it in love. And still stand by the person. Because there are people who are further along in their maturity than I am. There are people who are less mature than I am. Well, we all trying to get in here. And the thing of it is, is that we're better off trying to do it together. And not throwing people away. I throw nobody away. I don't. I don't. I pray that she does have a deep relationship with God. I pray that maybe this is an area that God has to work, work on, on in her. Yeah, well, I'm going to help him. And then, Don't you worry. I'm going to help them. So okay, I'm helping them right now. You, you can get own... mad at me or whatever, but I'm going to help them get your life right. Now, you attack me every time you disagree. You don't never agree with nothing I say. But we're going to pray for you, you know, at the end of the day. Stop yeah. showing the whole bed. Well, it's fine. No, it ain't. There, there. Just keep us in the middle. You know, because at the end of the day, you ain't helping nobody. These people out here... Just, just relaxing, sleeping with, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Mary, Siri, and Larry, you know, and gigs, a bunch of stuff going on around, and you attacking me ain't helping get their life straight. I'm sorry, I look sleepy. I guess I am getting sleepy. People. No, we we about to hang this thing up because I'm gonna end it. We gonna pray for this. We gonna pray to get the, to get the devil out of you. That what we gonna pray on. Now, now, I love you, but we had to we had to get this straight now, because let me tell you something. There are people out here that are hurting over this. You want me to hold the phone? So there are people out here that want to. There are people out here that want to get married. That's been with the same person 
15 and 16 years and want to get married while the other one is hesitating and waiting on that person to be ready when that person is ready. And it's not fair to the other people. Now, what you did in your 10 years, if you decided to wait till your husband wanted to get married, then that was on you. I wish I would have known then because I would have told him to straighten his little butt up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would have told him from a distance, but I would have told him. I probably would have been on the other side on the, the street. Like, on the hey, side you. of the street. Straighten up, bro. Straighten up. Marry yeah. that woman. Marry But, you know, I mean. Like, you know, you don't, you know, because there are people that desire to get married and they want to marry that person that they've been with for 20 years and that man ain't stepping up to the plate. And you could only imagine who it is. And you inspired those people by by sitting there going against me today. You inspired them more not to step up to the plate. Now, I can understand the other party because the other party probably ain't 35 years old yet. So when they were dating probably 15, 16 years old and made it to 10 years at 25 to 30 years old right now. But when you're almost 60 years old and you talking like that, that's a problem. That's an issue. Now, my mama ain't the most spiritual person in the world. But that would be an issue to her. You know, people want to do God's will, whether they hide it or however, they want to do God's will so much. But they're fighting temptation because temptation is so strong out here. And they don't know where to go. They don't know who to go to. They're just running around in circles and circles and circles because of the strength of temptation. And how are you helping? Um, I ain't worried about nothing. Just me and my head being, we've been together 25 years, 30 years, and if it ain't me and my head, be, it ain't nobody because me and my head, be, we go to the movies, we go to the mall, just a and, and, and we just doing this, and we just I'm doing that. Just fussing at the people. <laughs> well, well, Larry and Mary over there, sinning and shacking and got 10 babies together and he ain't even trying to marry her. That ain't me and my head, baby. Me and my head, baby. Yeah, but that's supposed to be your friend. No, that's not my head, baby. That ain't none of my business. Oh, okay. Well, just like Judy said, I wouldn't want to be around you. Yeah, I, I need better friends than that. I, I wouldn't want to be around I need some friends. You. That'll call me to the carpet, take me out, but they say take me to the woodshed. I need some friends who are going to keep it real. I need some friends who are going to remind me, wait a minute, that's not how you were raised. You know, I need some friends that you, that you really think this is what God has for you. Larry, Larry done gave Mary aid. So that ain't, that ain't me and my husband. Well, you could have told him, you could have told Mary that Larry was sleeping with five girls at the same time, and ended up hitting something wrong. That is not me and my hubby. That just my yeah, but that's your friend. That's somebody that you kick it with all the time. That's your, friend. That's your brother. That's your, that's your sister. That's your sister. That's, yeah, especially if they're in Christ. Do you know how you sound when and, you and said just, that? You know, we, but we've gotten to this. I wonder attitude. how he felt though. I want, we've gotten to this attitude that... Would you ever put me on like that? Would you ever what? say something like that? That ain't me and my husband, because me and my husband, we the happiest things in the world. Would you say something like that? If it was somebody, your best friend, that was doing something... You don't wrong. know how I treat my best friend. Yeah, but I'm just <laughs> saying... Let me see if get on here. They all know how I treat them. I'm going to tell them the doggone truth. And sometimes, what what's, what's Renia always has to say, Judy, please be gentle with your words. Be gentle, be gentle. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell you what's important, and I'm not going to um, sugarcoat sugar. I mean, I'm not going to be nasty, horrible about. It. I don't know what's going on, um, but um, I am going to be honest. And I can't even imagine. I just can't imagine if I had a friend. I'm gonna tell you a story. I did have somebody one time. They were um, they were coming over my house, and my kids didn't act right. 
And they didn't want to tell me. Because they were like, well, you know, some people don't want to hear nothing negative about their kids. And all that sort of thing. So, it eventually got, it came out in an argument. We were fussing about something. And they were like, well, you know, your children don't do... I said, hold up, stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. The argument just flew out the window. I was like, what about the kids? Well, we didn't want to tell you because... Well, well, hold up. How do you expect me to raise good kids if you don't tell me when they do something wrong? Well, you know, people don't want to hear certain things about their children. And we're going to just go ahead and finish that. Um, we don't. They don't want to hear negativity about their kids. And so we just, we just figured, you know, we, you know, I got madder. If you want, I can try to put it on again. I got madder at them because they didn't tell me. I said, let me tell you something. The kind of mother that I am, it is more important that I raise good boys than that I live in some fantasy land that my kids never do anything wrong. I said, that doesn't even make any sense. One day they're going to be out on their own. And if they're not corrected as children, how are they going to be out here making bigger mistakes as adults? So they were like, wow, wow. I called them right in there. I said, so-and-so told me that back a couple, two weeks ago, you did something. One, you need to apologize right here and now in front of me. Two, you're on punishment for the thing you did. And I did it in front of them so that they would see the kind of parent that I am. That I'm not going to sit here and coddle my kids if they're not doing the right thing. So why in the world, as believers, would we allow our brothers and sisters to wander around? Well, it's the guy. It's not my business. Because that's not me and my hip. It's not my business. Me and my hip. I mean, unless it comes up in a conversation, I'm not going to say anything. I, I, these are people you know well. I mean, I'm not, like I said, we're not going to strangers, but if it's somebody you know well, I think you have an obligation to to show your care and love for these people. You know, it says we're going to be snatching some by fire and some by the flood. What, you just going to let them float by and burn up? I mean, what in the world? Where have we gotten to in our walk with Christ that we would allow Someone just, well, you know, that's just this between them. I don't know where their relationship with God is. Why don't you ask? Say, you know, where is your relationship right now? Where, where, right now. Oh, you turned around. You can see the ceiling. Um, where's your mindset right now? How, how are you feeling right now? It's okay to talk to people this way. It's just, I, to me, it's a sign of love. It's a major sign of love. So I'm like, where have we gotten to in our Christianity that it's hands off? Blind eyes. We don't see that going on. Oh, well, that's between them and God. I just come in this building, sit next to them, and go home and mind my business. Something wrong with that scenario. Something really wrong. And I'm not even, I'm not judging you under death because you do that. I'm just saying to me, that is not what our God intended for us to do. It's just not. And so, you know, I pray that you'll feel strength and strong enough in the Holy Spirit to cover your brother and sister. If nothing else in prayer. And nothing else in, but in prayer. Say, so, you know, look, I can't make the decision for you what you're doing. I cannot, you know, but I am going to cover you in prayer. That God's grace and mercy. What did she say? God said, be about your brother's business. He sure did. He sure did. Okay. When the early church got together, they were confessing among each other. They were taking care of each other. If somebody had a need, if somebody was going through they felt em empowered to do that. So where have we gotten where we're completely hands off of our brothers and sisters? If one of you is taken in a sin, the Bible says what? Restore that person. So are we just not reading whole passages? Is it like, you know, 
private, what is it, files you get from the FBI where half of it is blacked out and marked off? Is that how we're reading the word these days? That we're just acting like certain passages are just not there. And as long as I just go to church and pay my tithe and then I go home and I don't, I don't pay attention and unless somebody draws me into a conversation, if it comes up, they go to home together on a regular basis and, you know, it come, doesn't come up. I was just kind of shocked by all. That's why I agreed to do this. I don't want to put anybody down. This is not putting anybody down. I pray that it's a clarion call oh, boom, to the church like to that. say, look, we cannot do this. We cannot get to the point where we allow people just to continue in, in whatever we see, some sort of behavior. And we're not saying it out of our own minds. We have this book. We have a whole book that says, this you shall not do. You know, this you shouldn't do. So it's not like you're coming to judge people. You're saying this is the word of the God you say you and I all agree to. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, right now, I just don't want to pay that any passage anymore. Okay, but the passage is still there. And so I'm going to be praying for you. And I'm going to stand by you. This is why I have friends that have gone through some crazy, and sinful situations. Your, and they come for you for advice. And I'm there sometimes through the whole thing. The whole thing. From the beginning when she met the dude to the end where he's somewhere else and here's a baby. Through the whole thing. Why? Because while I still hold up a standard, I do it in love. And I do it like I'm not letting you go. I'm not. The Bible says that Jesus left 99 to go find one. You think you're supposed to just let them go and mind your business? I, I don't even Not Jay-Z. Wait a minute. Not Jay-Z's part. I got 99, but ain't one. She's saying... That Jesus left 99, left 99 to go to, to one. Go Not one. one going to 99. Okay. Hmm. Search for one. And bring that one Jesus. back to the fold. This is our master. This is our Lord and master. And so nowadays Do you know what we you watch just said? people. Do you hear just, what you just said? Just go off. Let them fall off cliffs. And you don't say nothing to them. You let them... Um, you know, wallow know. in something and you don't say nothing to them? That dog on Stacy say all com all communities need that. Yes, all communities do need this because whites are suffering. I'm telling you Everybody now. Everybody is suffering. We're all dealing with temptation and sin and if no one will stand up and say, I love you enough to tell you you're that sinning. you're sinning, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here in your I'm life. I'm going to post that. I love you enough to tell you that you're sinning. Sinning, and I, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. I'm loving on you. I'm holding up a standard. I'm, I'm there for you. And whether you get married to the person in this sense, you were talking about, you know, fornication and shacking, or you don't, I'm still here for you. You know, just like we said when we did our single parent form, and I'm going to say this every single year we do this single parent form. I don't care how you got here. Now that you're here, God's got you. I don't care whether you got here because, you know, it was a one night stand, it was a long term relationship, it was a marriage and he left you. I don't care how you got to this condition of being a single parent. But now that you're here, we got you. We got you as a family and God's got you. That's what we're supposed to do. I mean, I don't have a pile of scriptures, but I, the couple of ones that popped in my head. You know? See, this is the thing. What? What is the thing? As you try this to sit up thing. on my arm. Yeah, <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> He's forever falling down in his bed. Okay. What happened was, what happened with that? it hit a nerve like you said. Yeah, I think so. It hit a nerve. It hit a, it hit a nerve because this person went through nine, ten years. And they felt guilty. And now they feel as if because I went nine, ten years, I sure can't tell somebody else to rush and hurry up. Yeah. But we weren't really telling you to rush and hurry up. What we were saying is if you're, if you're shacking, don't just call that person a friend. You no, know, I was saying 
that if you're shack, yeah, if you're shacking, shacking don't, don't call the person a friend. friend. That person is 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 your item. Is an item. Okay. And if your guys are an item, either get married or, or, some, or go to drugs. go about your business. Right. That's what I said. That's all he was saying. So we weren't telling no, people but, that but, they should hurry up and rush and you know. No, but you know maybe because the thing about it is somebody posted it the other day. The woman sits and waits. And the man makes the decision on when he gets married. Mm, people, I'm so sorry to you. The man, that. the man makes man the decision. Man makes the decision on, about marriage. Yes. Yeah, the I've man been makes the decision lately, about I've marriage. Been saying that. Mm -hmm. So maybe they felt at a point to where they probably took too long, or they probably waited so long in order to marry the man that they married. And maybe they felt some type of way about it. I, I don't know. I just, I you just, see what I'm saying? You I know, know how what you wait. Saying. You know, know how you saying. wait for nine years and you be like, oh, Lord, what the world I done got my... You don't want me to cuss. What the world I done got myself into? I waited nine years for this, Lord. And so they're like, no, no. You know, you say you, they seeing something like me. And they're like, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't have them to wait. Have them to wait longer than nine years. Have them to wait 20 years for that. But that ain't God. And the thing of it is, is that do you get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Okay. Whether they feel some kind of way about what they went through, or whether however they feel, the thing of it is, and, is the, that and out in the open, it's like I'm the happiest. I'm happy with me and my husband. Me and my husband, we going out to eat the McDonald's and we going <laughs> to a movie and we doing all of this. And next thing you know, on the inside, she's like, oh, I'm the most miserable person in the world. Well, you know what? I'm not going to assume because I really don't know. I don't know what people feel. No, I don't know it. either, but, but I I'm guarantee just, you well, if you The feel thing that I'm that saying is, and I guess what I get, I'm, I'm, what I get upset is, is that you want to take this hands-off approach to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I don't think we should do that. I don't think that is what God intended for us to do, is to have no connection and just like, if you see them caught in a sin, oh, well, that's not my business. I, I don't know they walk with God. Let them, let God and them work it. How God working it out? You know, if not through you, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's you know, however she got here and she, if she is or is not happy, it's not even my concern. I pray that they are. But well, I the, do too, Lord have mercy. But the thing of it is, is that what I do see is the hands off on someone else in that situation. That I had to take offense at. I was like, no, we still hold up a standard. You know, because I'm a redeemed person, should I never talk about redemption? Because I'm a person who has sinned, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So there's nothing we can do about that condition except through the gift that we get through faith in Jesus Christ and his gift. We, we you know, so what am I, never to speak of redemption? That doesn't even make any sense. We all have fallen short. So there's nothing where I can stand above you. I'm looking at you eye to eye. You know what I'm saying? Eye to eye. We both need redemption. He's working on me on certain things. He may be working on you on certain things. Now, the only thing where the body... Ooh, I don't know what Anna, Stacey said. You know, she's going in it. The one thing that the Bible says is that some people want to take out of context and say, oh, well, you know, this means you're never supposed mm. to say anything. What, what, what? Mm, Jesus. I told you. Oh, yeah, she's going in. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the last days. I think that's Timothy, Second Timothy. I don't know. She put the scripture in there. No, she but, didn't um, put the scripture. Some but, people will say, well... You know, the Bible says if you you shouldn't talk to your brother about the little thing in his eye when you got a big old mo you know, big old sin in your eye and, and you should take care of that first and then oh, how do we take care of our sin? How do we take care of our sin? Through repentance yeah. and through the gift of Jesus Christ. So if I go to God and I repent, God, I'm I'm so sorry for this huge thing I did. And not receive repentance, I can then go to my brother and talk about repentance. That's what we're talking about. We're, we're not sitting here talking about sin. We're talking about repentance. We're talking about the gift, the redemptive gift 
that comes through Jesus Christ. And so if your conversation about sin only stops with the sin, yeah, then be quiet. But if your conversation says, you know, I see this thing and I just want to address it with you. You know, this isn't God's will. We can see it in the word. What do you think about it? Let's talk about it. And that person wants to say, you know what? Thank you for talking to me. I've really been struggling with this thing or I've just been trying to be in denial about this thing. And you talking to me now has made me realize I've got to come to a decision. You've just saved your brother. Because you're not focusing on the sin. You're focusing on redemption. And this is what I'm telling people over and over again. Stop focusing on the sin. Oh, well, you know, he's a homosexual. Yeah, and you're just so proud every other minute. You look down on every person on the planet. Let's deal with the fact that we need redemption. Yeah, and there Jesse, is a way. If he's a homosexual, say God loves you. He and go up you. and give him a hug you know, and a tight kiss. I mean, the thing of it is, is that if... If this person says, look, I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm persisting in what I'm doing. Okay. But I love you. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not unfriending you. Yeah. I'm not going to throw yeah, you out and, you and block you. I'm another man in the butt, that don't mean, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, God might not be pleased with it. But I still love you. I still have to. The yeah. thing of it is, is, I have to love you. Because the thing of it is, is how do I show forth the love of God yeah. if I run around with some hate? Yeah, you still how do I how about I sit there and condemn you? This is the thing. To judge a behavior is not to condemn the person. It's not. And the people I was talking about, sweetheart, I don't hate them. And they know I don't hate them. They know, if anything, I love them with all of my heart. They know me. You was just sticking your nose in something you ain't know nothing about, but it's okay. Because I love you. But you know what? I'm glad they opened their mouth because it gave me a chance to talk about this. It gave us a chance to talk about the fact that as a Christian, you are not supposed to be turning blind eyes and acting like you don't see stuff. That is not you your know, way. that's what it says in the Bible, Judy. Me what? and my head be, we going to, me and my head that's, be, that's, that's, that's what it says in the it Bible. It has not says anything. Me and my head be, we going to eat, we going to uh, peel change to eat some try chicken and whatever they doing over up, there. Make me get up and want some food and I mean, you keep talking about food, but um, it, it's, it's, it's given us a chance to talk about this subject. Abomination. You know. But you still love them, John. Now, you can still hug them. You can still give them a kiss on the cheek and say, I love you. But God loves you more. You want to end it with a prayer, sweetheart? Because we got to pray. We got to pray for this spirit. We got to pray for this spirit of sin. So if y'all don't mind, please bow your head. No, I ain't worried about the separation. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you see me sinning and you don't say nothing to me, I don't need to be around you. So, yeah, just separate yourself on up. And go with me. You and your husband or whatever you go with. Because I don't fool with the foolishness. Now, I'll call you out. Now, I'll do it, you know, over here. You know, it'll be over here while you over there. Oh, hush. But at the same time, I'll call you out. I feel safe calling you out right now. <laughs> I'm real safe calling you, you but out right now. What? I'm homophobic. Nope. The, he said John Williams says he's homophobic. homophobic. You love them and you give them a kiss and you say, I love you, ma'am. Like this, you give you give them a kiss like this. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just as crazy. And you say, I love you, ma'am. You don't have to kiss them, John. I'm just trying to. Oh, what hold we're their saying hand. Is, Michael is Jackson that... and Akon said, hold my hand. Hold their hand, man. You don't know that song, do you? I, I'm not trying to. Even... I'm going to play it One minute you, you were supposed to be praying, the next minute you Yeah, let's it. pray. But um, what, the thing of it is, is that regardless of the sin, you call out the behavior. You do not condemn the person because there is a redemption through salvation. And whether that person 
receive salvation like the thief did hanging on the cross the last hours of his life or whether the person starts off as a young person we all have a certain journey that God has assigned to each person and therefore um, he says he doesn't hate them and therefore our role is to be there for our brothers and sisters and we don't know you know some of the most reprobate people have turned their lives around. We we talk to them all the time. People, especially people who, um, some of our rappers were out on the street and God called them. Um, some of these bikers that are on there, you know, our bikers for Christ, they were out there doing the worst thing and God called them. You don't know who God is going to call. And so when you sit there and say, oh, well, they sin and ain't my business anyway. Are you kidding me? That person's no, testimony you... could be humongous if you stood in the gap for them. If you stand there and say, you know what? God loves you and he has this redemptive, redemptive plan for you. And I just want to let you know about it. I'm not coming to you. Hey, I'm not coming to you as a person who's better than you. Let me even tell you what he saved me from. Mm. Let me tell you what he redeemed me from. Let me tell you what he took the taste of out of my mouth. Let, Let me, me tell you up. what he stopped making Jeez. ravage through my body. Let me tell you what he's able to do. If you're not coming to someone in that manner, yeah, then maybe you ought to be quiet. Maybe you ought to be quiet. Because we are here as living testimonies. We are here as lights, not under bushels, but set up on a mountaintop. That's how we're supposed to be walking through this world. And if you're taking a holier-than-thou path, or, well, now I got mine, you get your salvation. You got it. I'm the one judging. She ain't holier-than-thou. I'm the one that's supposed to be judging like I'm holier-than-thou. Let me tell you something, people. No, let me tell you something. And I get questioned about it. As soon as we get off, I might get choked about it. But I could have had eight years ago. I could have had 10 baby mamas years ago. Okay, mister, you lied. I could have been shot and killed years ago. I could have been dead years ago. I could have been dead last year. I wasn't even supposed to be born. I wasn't even supposed to live this long. I could have been dead. Thank I wasn't supposed... 1976, I wasn't supposed to be here. My mama was supposed to pass right after she had me. He had another 40 years. We, we don't understand. Oh, my goodness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know what Desire is talking about right here, talking about stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ouch, what's the matter with I you? I got it. I'm in a zone. I'm feeling the power. I'm I'm just I'm I'm sorry, baby. Okay, okay. Baby. But I'm getting excited. I wasn't supposed to be here. I wasn't supposed to make it past birth. And most of the people that grew up with me, especially the one that was in the coming, he'll tell you for himself. I wasn't supposed to be here, Mrs. But it was because of people like him that I'm here. Accountability. And he knows that. See, you got to watch who you're running your mouth to. You got to watch who you're coming against. You got to watch what you're doing before you do it. Because you don't know what type of position or what type of testimony that I could be or anybody could be to that person who read that post, who felt a certain type of way, might have felt some type of conviction about what they were doing, might felt bad about what they were doing. And like, I got to make a decision right now. Right now, I got to make a decision on, and get right with God right now. And when you did that, 
that only caused the hour later for somebody to sit there and say, somebody f to sit there and say, oh, you've been bothering me for so long, but I know that's God. So I thank you for trying to attack me like that. Because every time somebody tries to attack me, God is always in the midst. Just like your other friend talking about him killing my ministry. I'm watching you too. I'm watching you. I'm not watching him. <laughs> I'm not watching him. But this is the point though. This no, but seriously though. Be seriously. Be careful of who you're watching. Be careful of who's listening to. Because one thing about it is you don't know what type of effect you might have on that person. So when you sit there and you, you're supposed to be all churchy and all Christian and you're saying you're only concerned about me and my husband, that person that wanted to come to you and be like, yeah, I want to see this lady because this lady seems like a woman of God and you post something like that, you done drew them away from you already. Do I make any sense? Uh, you're making sense. Because I didn't think I made any sense right there. But anyway, you done drew that person oh, away. You done me. drew that person <sighs> away so, already. So heavy. You done drew that person away from God. You done drew that person away from you in order to go to God because they know better. How can I sit there and go to this person and talk to this person when this person is only concerned about herself? Yeah, and what's well, it going worked on for in me. Her life. I went nine years of doing this, and now we've had 14 years of doing that, and so it worked for me. But th that does not make it God's will. That you were successful, that you have a man that cares about you, that you have a successful marriage is fine, but you cannot set that up as a standard. You can't. And and you're right about something. If somebody was feeling like, you know what, wow, I, I don't feel like I'm, I don't want somebody to refer to me as a friend when I'm sitting up here in their house, you know, we sleeping in the same bed, we, we acting like husband and wife. I don't want to feel like a friend. It's okay to tell somebody that because it's a guidepost. It's like, hey, ding, 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 ding. If this pertains to you, there's a better way. There's a better way. If we just sat around and said, well, it's none of our business if anybody just keeps on going and dies in their sin, because that's basically what you're saying. If they're dying in their sin, there's no, no skin off my nose because I got mine and it worked out for me. So I can't tell anybody anything. You can tell them the will of God. You can tell them how, well, you know what? No, I can't tell you that I followed everything that God wills, but his with grace and mercy, I'm still here to tell you that we have established a relationship now based on God. It didn't start off that way. It started off living in sin, but now we're here. You can still tell the story. You don't have to worry about this. Somebody's going to judge you. Because I think that's what people are worried of. I can't judge nobody because you don't want to be judged yourself. But if you use it as a testimony to what? Not to point to yourself, but to point to God, to point to the gift of Jesus Christ. When you use it to take the, the spotlight off of yourself, but to use it to point to God, you don't have to worry about being judged. I wish somebody would. I said this the other day. I was riding around. I was thinking about something. must have been listening to something on the radio. And they were talking about their past. And I said, you know what? People here in Charlotte really don't know me. <laughs> they don't. I've only been here seven years. I've only been here seven years. So they don't know me. Why don't you put the glasses back on and stop squinting? Go ahead. You Generations need help. Go ahead. So, you know, the thing of it is, is I wish somebody, now that, you know, certain people are starting to know me, I wish they would do some dig up some, oh, let me dig up some dirt on Judy. Let me let me go back in her past and find something she did. I want them to dig up some dirt on me because I mean, I've been you know, dying. I'll be dig like, you know what, go ahead. And and um, well, well, Judy, you know, back when you were in New York, this happened. I wish they would. I wish they would, because I'd be able to tell them. And to God be the glory that I'm still here. That He didn't snuff my I ain't life afraid out. To tell you okay. Nothing. 
that he didn't snatch me up in the midst of my sin, that he stood there with grace and mercy, fresh and new every morning and allowed me to get up and continue in sin for a while until he said, now I'm calling you, not to mean to slap you, but now I'm calling you. Now enough is enough. Now you're not going any further. And now I need you to walk with me. I wish somebody would take me back to that day. You can tell, you can say anything about me. I ain't got nothing to hide. It's, well, I well, ain't got nothing to be ashamed It's not even about of. the hide or, or, or it. ashamed. It's like, let me tell you the grace. And mercy of God, but that's but what then, I'm you saying. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, There's whoever looking behind the screens. In your story. Yeah, whoever looking behind the screens is three people. But I know some people strolling down, looking behind the scenes. What Chip talking about? Tell it all. I ain't ashamed of a doggone thing. Anything you want to say about me, and, go and ahead. Let me tell you something. I ain't scared of you because I want to tell all your business anyway, and I really want to write it down and put it yeah, in the book so people can really expose it. So I really can expose it. No, go hush, ahead. Hush, hush, hush. You just get on a tantrum people and a rant. Try to, people try to hurt with your past. Yes, but you know what? They can't hurt you. When you are a new creation in Christ, they can't hurt you. They can't. They think that they can pull you down. All it shows is that you needed the same um, saving grace that they do. And you can show that it works. Because if those are the things you did in the past and now you don't even have a desire to do them anymore. You don't have a desire to go to those places anymore. You don't have a desire to speak that way. You don't have a desire to act that way. If that's now the story that you can tell from where you were to where you are now, what can they say? What can they say? So it, it's sort of like, you know, we're, we're, we're bound to tell our stories. We're bound to tell how Christ has redeemed us and changed us and made us better. We're bound. We're not trying to be like, well, I got so many skeletons in my closet. I can't say, mm, I can't, mm, I can't bring that up. We're going to expose First of all, you wait anyway. a minute. No, no, no. Let's be real. I'm a private person. No, well, I'm gonna make you no, public. No, no, this is this is. I'm the gonna thing. make your butt public. Th this is the thing. Now I'm I'm talking from God's perspective. Go ahead. If you got skeletons in your closet, then have you truly been redeemed? Because He said that He would remove his, your sin as far away from you as east is from west. Why are you holding on to skeletons? Why is there anything in your closet? Why isn't your story? about how God has wiped your closet clean. Why isn't it about, there could have been some stuff in my closet. There would have been some stuff. There should have been some stuff in my closet. But before, because of God, I can stand clean. If you're not telling that story, you need to check yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Well, we're going to end this right now. Usually I surprise you with the end, but we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray to cover your spirit. So, you know, because you've got a bad spirit. And we're going to pray for anybody that's in sin right now that's shacking. And, you know, and. Um, anything, any sin that besets, that betakes a man, anything that overtakes somebody, I'm praying against it. If it's your anger, yeah, it's your pride. Go. Let's go. If it's different things like. The arrogance. That, it, you know, if it's it arrogance, right now, if, it's, if, it's, if it's lying, if it's stealing, whatever it is. Know that there is grace that is greater than the sin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for this time that we've been able to share with our Facebook friends, for those who may listen to this later, for those who may watch it on YouTube. Heavenly Father, your prayer and your, your word stands firm that we are saved. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And you said you also came to give us life and life more abundantly, not just eternal, but we our, our life starts now. Our life starts today, dear God. And I ask that you go to each and every one that may be feeling 
that they can't talk to anyone because of skeletons in their closet or sins that they have committed in the past. Dear God, let them understand that because of your redemptive power through the gift of, 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 God, of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, they are not held by any of those things. That their life, they are now a new creation in Christ. And that they now can go to anybody and talk to them, not in a condemnation, not in condemnation, but in letting them know those behaviors you don't have to do anymore. They don't have to have control of you anymore. Dear God, give them the power and the might and the courage to stand up when they see sin. Not because they're judging the person unto death, but they're loving the person unto life. Dear God, give them the energy and the mindset to know that you've saved them from past, sins, present, and future. As long as we come to you in faith and repentance and ask for being to be saved. Dear God, touch their minds and their hearts. Let them not be so self-centered that it's all about what's happening with me and I don't have the right to talk to anybody. Soften their hearts, dear God, so that they would have a love and a yearning for other people. We ask, Lord, that you will bless all of us, Lord, to walk further and more in more and further in more maturity and understanding who we are in Christ and who we are assigned to help. And I pray this thing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, can I get a three or four month kiss since we've just been married only three or four months? You know what? She and said, I act like I got it all together. No, we don't act like we got it all together. And after three or four months and they've been married for... Actually, next month will be six months. Oh. Okay. Half a year that we've been married. Yeah. Okay, and it's only getting better. I got to tell you, people, it's getting better because as God is bringing us and breaking us in our in our own selfishness and bringing us to know God, we're caring for one another. I see it more and more every day in my husband. But anyway. She said, what has it been, three or four months? Yeah. She said, you better look to your own marriage. His assignment. He's looking to his assignment. <laughs> Anyway, can we tell them God we love you? We love you, but God, God loves, loves you more. more. Bye-bye. <laughs>